Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to Draft Day Sports Pro Basketball 2020. This is episode number 21. The team's down to 14 and 13 after a difficult, long road trip in which we only claimed a couple victories. That continues to be uh, our challenge this season. For this game, we're at home, finally. First game back at home after being on the road for the entire uh, entirety of what was played off camera. And Willie Colley-Stein has picked up an injury, so Bull Bull into the starting lineup, getting his uh, first career start. Let's go ahead and start the game. Oh, wait. All right, so uh, at home we've been good. I, I think we're like nine and two here to start the season. So at home we've been getting the job done really well. Uh, Denver, even though they've got Murray and Jokic, they've not uh, really been that good of a team last season or so far this season, especially on the road. Just like we're having some difficulty on the road. So we should be the favorite for this game. But let's see as the game progresses quickly here how we do we, it is an early start we're out to a uh, double digit lead here mid first quarter that's definitely the kind of start we want plenty of timeouts uh, Denver already in the penalty though they do close the score down to uh, single digits there at least momentarily Fox though quick start for him 4 for 5 shooting 10 points and we start to cycle through our other guys Walker just 2 shots early on but Actually, he just added two, three more shots, missing all of them. He was two for two to start. Uh, Deadman off the bench. Swanigan getting some minutes. So very much second unit out there at the moment. And the score is a bit closer than it was, 32-25, this unit. Uh, led by Buddy Heald. He's really the only capable scorer they have. But Barnes now on the court with them, helping out, and hopefully with those two anyway, they can get a, get the job done. They do get it back above um, double digits. 39-28, seven minutes to go here in the first half. Rebounds were plus one. Steals, steals alone, plus four. Turnovers is a plus eight, so that's where we're really getting the job done. We take care of the ball and we force a lot of turnovers that's a high pressure high intensity defense that we're running and that's where that's really leading to a lot of fast breaks for us and uh, that's been kind of our staple uh, on the road we don't seem to do it as well and in fact this game we shouldn't be ahead we're just 2 of 14 beyond the arc 2 of 15 beyond the arc now so 13 percent from three is really a poor, poor half shooting wise. Just 40, 41% from the field. We should be trailing, but we're up seven, mostly because of the turnovers. Uh, Walker did step it up after missing those three straight shots. He went, into my, went on to make his next four, and now has 15 points. Fox, I did not see after he first went on. Did he, did he ever get back into the game? second quarter well if he didn't he is now anyway uh, no he didn't he's got three fouls so that was that was a key point there was fox had three fouls in the first quarter didn't play the second quarter at all 10.6 assists for him so he was having a big half anyway despite not really playing much at all so got to keep an eye on that if fox suddenly disappears we'll know why jamal murray has eight points Kogi's got six, but not much going on. We're holding Jokic. He's got just six points. No assists for Jokic. Walker now sitting at 19. He's about to break into the 20. Denman off the bench. Ten points for him. Between he and Bull Bull. They seem to be getting the job done in, in lieu of uh, Willie Clay Stein today. care that we're getting so many little glitches bottom right corner of the screen it's not yours uh, it's the game doing that that's the code I think running in the background catching glimpses of it 
as we speed through. So the game still stays tight as we get the fourth quarter underway. Tight in the sense that the score line hasn't really changed much. We've been hovering around a 10 point lead ever since the early first quarter. Healed with 13 points off the bench. Deadman with 17 off the bench. So those guys really get us a boost out there. 89-75 with six to play. It's looking like we should be able to hang on for the win, but Murray, big scorer for them. 24 points for him, 7-12 shooting, 7 rebounds, 4 assists. It's not sharing the ball terribly well for a point guard. 98-83 there a moment ago, first one to 100. And yes, I think we could be cruising our way. Uh, Fox finally getting back in on the action a little bit. He's up to four fouls. Walker has four fouls. 16 points. Walker's got 24. Big three there. Helps put this one away. Just over a minute to play. And now it's a 20 point lead. A little garbage time at the end. Final score 113.90. Barnes played a lot of minutes in that game. And. I don't think I ever saw Bull Bull get back in the game, so I don't know what happened with him. Did he... He played 18 minutes. 5 of 6 from the free throw line. 5 fouls. That's, that's why it was not an injury. So, limited minutes for him in his debut in the starting lineup. And Deadman ends up stealing the show from him. Much needed victory to recover from a difficult uh, road stretch that we were just on. Uh, what do you got for me? Gary Locklear. Pretty solid. Showed some flashes of brilliance. Not superstar potential, but definitely a starter at some point. But at a position we do not need to fill. So we pick up our first injury of the season, Willie Colley Stein, and it's eh, sore leg, probable one day, he'll be back, okay, not a big deal, so we've been lucky so far in that department, uh, where we haven't been lucky is on the road, we've definitely, definitely struggled on the road early in the season, but let's go ahead and push forward a week, it's the middle of December, the opportunity to start Ooh, close win against Houston there. Tight game. Been good at home. I mean, that we're 11 and 12. Buddy healed with an injury. I just caught that in the top right corner. Uh, that certainly won't help us. Hopefully, it's minor. Sprayed finger out for a week. That's not that bad. Hopefully we can pick up some wins here at home. And at some point, we have got to start playing a little bit better on the road if we have any hopes of making some sort of run this season. Matt Campbell, not terribly impressed. Fringe guy, okay. Speaking of the draft, take our first look. Right now, Grant Cooper is the favorite out of Arizona. A one-and-done guy, 27 points per game, 13 rebounds for him. So, yeah, you can see numbers-wise that uh, he is definitely a talent. Marlon Whitehead might be the player we're kind of looking at if he slips a little bit. But I'm not sure we're going to get high enough, and he's the only small forward in the top 15. So into the third season, my skills are definitely improving. We're at a 59 in player development now, 54 in strategy, a 53 in evaluating offense, 46 defense, and potential a 27. That's the one lagging behind a little bit, but after just a couple seasons, 
from nothing but ones. I'm capable of doing the job now. So it's only taken me two years, and we've had two winning seasons. We've made the playoffs twice. That has been an exceptional return, all things considered, especially when we were trying to tank that first season. And we even managed to uh, pick up Jake Walker with, what was that, the third pick overall? Or was it second? I think it was third. Back on the road already. We only got two home games. I mean, we're 5-11. and 11. That's 16 games out of 29. So we've already played more games on the road than we have at home. And we head right back on the road after a long road trip at the 11-2 and two home record Lakers. Not looking good for this one. And it's not. We lose 115-104. Fox with 25-9. and nine. Colley Stein had 12 boards for the double-double. We're still going to be out to uh, Buddy Healed for the rest of the week. That's not going to help us. Uh, luckily, that was only one. That's who 11 and 2 at home. We just can't get enough home games right now. 110, 103. Walker, 40 points, 8 assists, 2 blocks, 5 steals. What a huge day for Walker. G League affiliate seven and five to start their season. Now we get the Lakers again. It's not a back to back. There was a few days in between, but we get the home game against the Lakers this time, and they like us struggling on the road. We actually have kind of similar records anyway. Oh, but the Lakers do pick up a win. We get just our third loss on the road this season, and now just seventeen and fifteen after that long uh, road stretch that we had. The record is not looking so good right now. The Thunder should be a very winnable game, though. Can we rebound with one today? We do. 112, 103. Fox with 27. Healed back in action. He had 22 points, so he was excited to get back into the thick of things. And we got a day off for everybody. It's Christmas Eve. Nobody's playing today. Except for the G League teams. Wow, Blazers still 25 and 8, looking really good. Celtics 21 and 11, as are the 76ers. That's a pretty big matchup today. And we are playing at home against the Bulls. Oh, uh, 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 okay. I'm going through a little mini crisis right now. We lose on Christmas Day at home to a struggling team. We, a few days ago, had only had two losses at home all season. We're slipping down a little bit. Let's take a look at the conference standings now. Hawks leading the East, 76ers, Knicks, Celtics, Wizards, all looking pretty good. Even the Pacers, 18-14, not bad. But now the East starting to look like the East does. The last couple seeds are below 500. How are the Bucks only 14-17? It's the Blazers on top of the West, Clippers, Suns, Warriors, Lakers. Outstanding records, every single one of them. Even the Rockets, 21-13. Then it slips down a bit. Pelicans, Jazz, we are still, last time we checked, we were in this exact spot. We were ninth seed, same record as a team in the playoffs. It's just the Thunder that are really struggling. T-Wolves, Grizzlies, Nuggets, definitely more beatable teams. But even the Spurs, 15-18 is not bad, especially in the West. So the Thunder, the Pistons, the Hornets, the Nets, any of them might be ready to throw in the towel on their season pretty soon, meaning trade could be in the cards pretty soon. The deadline is February 8th. So early January, we can start looking into a trade again, as we took a look previously.
but we are suddenly a struggling team who have lost three straight at home when all three of them could have, should have, would have been wins in another day. Washington, a good Washington team that we just beat, finally, to uh, break the streak, and we lose again at home, San Antonio. So one and four out of the last five home games, games we needed to win. We should have taken four of five, and instead we only take one of five over the stretch. And as we enter January... Our season is starting to look a little down, and we've been pretty healthy. So, not sure what's up right now with the team as we begin 2022. But they very much have struggled on this time at home. And we head back on the road against a difficult Rockets team and we could drop to uh, 500 here and do and get blown out really Fox with 19 and 10 assists but otherwise not really anything on the stat sheet that's looking good and now still on the road still in Texas we play the Mavericks an 18 and 18 team but they're 14 and 5 at home we're just 5 and 13 on the road so Chance to drop below 500, but we snap at it or snatch at the opportunity and uh, get back on top. So, have we suddenly flipped to be that team that can go win on the road? Blazers suddenly struggling, 27 and 12 themselves. So, uh, tough league this year. Really tough league. Nobody is running away with things. We're not going to have any 70 win teams this year at all. Back to back wins on the road against good teams. So maybe we've snapped out of uh, our little funk and are ready to play some basketball. Seventh of January. I think there's got to be some teams, just a few maybe, but there's got to be some teams like the Thunder that are ready to offload some talent. Let's take a look at where the league is at payroll-wise. Nobody has cap space right now. No one. The Hawks... The Hawks are uh, looking like the only team. Wow. Okay, hold on, hold on. There is cap space. The Heat still have about $9 million. Uh, But let's look at some next year's cap space. The 76ers, the Rockets, the Nets. None of them are going to be ready to make a move. Uh, it looks like we are right at the edge right now. So let's see here. Uh, let's take a look at the standings. I think this is where you can really get an idea of who's out of it. Pistons and the Thunder especially. Their season's not looking good. I mean, they've already got 30-plus losses. Raptors, they do have 13 wins. They've played a lot of games already this season. The Nets, 15 games below 500, as are the Hornets. The Heat, so I'd say maybe those six teams, maybe the Grizzlies, possibly. Not the T-Wolves and above. So maybe these seven teams or so uh, are ready to make a move. So we'll look at the Pistons and Thunder first. Pistons, Thunder, 
Raptors. See if any of them are willing to deal yet. Pistons, Thunder, and Raptors. Nobody on the block right now. Anybody that we are interested in? Nothing. Nothing. No. Okay, Thunder. Still nothing on the trade block for them either. Gallinari. Gallinari could be an easier move. It's getting 15 points per game, playing 30 minutes. About 44%. Gallinari is a three-star guy. He's already 33, though. It's not exactly a piece that I really want to bring in. I'm not really willing to give up too much to get him. But I do have my obvious pieces like Deadman that I'm happy to give away. Uh, I'm not sure I'm willing to add in Cray Joseph right now. I need a backup point guard. Swan again. Ooh, advantage them, but not salary cap legal. All I need to do is add in a little bit of money. So where would we do that? Corey Joseph, of course. Tory Craig. Aha. Okay, we might have something here. They're not gonna no. What about a second round pick? Advantage none. 2023 second round pick, Deadman, Swanigan, and Tory Craig for Gallinari. We have Bull Bull to back up Willie Colley Stein. I'd rather have Bull Bull playing than Deadman anyway. It's an expiring contract. Swanigan has been ready to be trade bait for a while. He's just one and a half star guy, so that's just money to throw in. Uh, and then, yes, we're giving up Tory Craig, but, I mean, he's garbage time only. And, and getting Gallinari, that's not quite getting the piece. It's not quite the piece I want. I mean, he's 33, he's making 20 million, but it's a three-star guy. How much stronger is that going to make us? Uh, I don't know. Uh... I'm tempted. I'm tempted to make this work. I think this does help us a little bit, but not significantly. I'm going to keep this one on the back burner. We had one more we wanted to look at. Who, who was it? Who was it? We had Pistons. We had Thunder team from the east wasn't it raptors i've got nothing okay i need to look at uh, gallinari He is 
pretty much maxed out on his potential. Which makes sense. I mean, he's 33. Uh, Spray toe out for 10 days. Above the break threes, mid range, post. Really poor at the corners. Okay, definitely a pass first guy. Will do pull up jumpers. More of a catch and shoot kind of guy. That's good for a small forward. But he's getting paid big. And not very good on defense. I don't feel like that's an upgrade for us. He'll hit his free throws. He's a decent scorer. Score inside or out. Won't turn the ball over much. But he's not going to grab a ton of rebounds. He's not going to help us too much on defense. Though he'll get some steals. No. I... I don't think what we're giving up, or what we would be giving up to get Gallinari, I don't think it's enough, especially at 33. I don't want somebody who's going to be short-term boost only. We need a long-term fix, and Gallinari is not the long-term fix. Almost, almost pulled the trigger on that deal, but no, 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 and no. All right, another win, 22-19, but it's going to take more than that. Three games above 500 is not where I want to be at the, the end of the season. Oh, Steph Curry seriously injured, torn ACL. Another win at home, so after one little bad stretch, we're, we're back to taking care of things at home. We beat Milwaukee on the road, 24-19. and 19. Fox had 32 in that game. Another win on the road, beating Brooklyn. Brooklyn just 13-28, but still. Somebody had 47. I didn't see who it was. Beasley is hurt. Hot streak, yeah, yeah. Effort decreases. I hate that. It does that to you every time. Uh, let's get back to us, please. Thank you. Dashboard. Okay, Beasley, Beasley. What's it gonna be? Strained calf, out for two weeks. We have some depth there, so uh, we'll be okay. Justin James will take the minutes. I don't need to uh, bring Thompson in. All right, 25 and 19. It's not a bad place to be now. Definitely better than we, we were just a handful of games ago. Fox, one game clear of the mix. 76ers, three and a half back. Celtics, four back. And then it drops off a bit. And then... Clippers, 30-13. Half game clear of the Blazers. Two and a half clear of the Warriors. Lakers, three and a half. Suns, three and a half back. Pelicans are four back. Rockets are four and a half back. We are in the playoffs right now. 25-19. Barely. Barely in the playoffs. Five and a half games back. Jazz 23-19. and 19. Even the Mavericks aren't far behind. Just eight, ga eight games back, so two and a half back of us. Uh, Spurs just uh, a game further behind. It's tight in the West, See, as it seems to be almost every year. Really, you've only got one bad team in the West in the Thunder. And then, you know, the Grizzlies, the T-Wolves, the Nuggets. They're not bad teams. They're just unlucky and playing in the West. I mean, looking at their conference records, you would see T-Wolves actually even a little bit better in the conference, but uh, they just can't get any wins on the road. Speaking of, we are, what, 9-13, and, and you, you know, looking around us, Pelicans, Rockets, all struggling on the road. Uh, it's really just Clippers, Blazers, Suns, the only teams able to win on the road this season. So, 
you've really got to take care of business at home. 16 and 6 is still technically taking care of business, but that little stretch, right, where we lost 4 out of 5 at home really hurt. Really hurt. But overall, we've won 6 straight. 6 straight. We were down to 19 and 19, and we've won 6 straight. I think it's going to take more than one or two little win streaks, though, to uh, get the job done. 9-13 is a lot better than where we started, though, so hopefully, hopefully, uh, this team can keep it up a little bit longer. Let's go ahead and hammer out one more week, and then we'll call it an episode. Went on the road, 26-19, Walker with 17, Bagley with 19 for that game. One hundred eight, one hundred five. Went on the road again. Walker with forty-one, five assists, twelve rebounds. <coughs> Excuse me. Another win on the road. Twenty-eight, nineteen. We've won nine straight games. So massive win streak going on here. Really, really setting us up for. Of course, Walker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have to. I, I have to offer praise. All right. Well, I, th I think that's that's our stopping point now. This has got to have moved us up a little bit. A little bit. Like I said, a little bit. It's given us some distance, though, from the 99 seed. That's, that's the big thing here. Uh, we're just percentage points behind the Warriors. We're just a half game behind the Rockets. We're just one game behind the Lakers. It's so tight in the West, though. It's so tight. We're only a game ahead of the Pelicans. But we are distancing a little bit these guys now, right? Five and a half games ahead of the Mavericks. Four games up on the Spurs. So little gap opening behind us. That's big. That's big. But that's going to do it for this episode. I'm the Kathleen Gaber. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.